Johnson and Jackson. Jackson's in the lead. Now Johnson's moving in front. No, it's Jack John. Jack, what a race. They're making great time. They're crossing the line neck and neck. Here's the official tape in replay. And the winner, yes, it's, uh, no, it's, it's Johnson. Johnson wins with a lead of five one hundredths of a second over Jackson. It's a world record. One hundredth of one second. You realize that's 20 times less than one second. It takes your breath away. And what precision. What mastery of time. Uh, mastery of time, what tempo. You're always in a big hurry, never a second to spare. Yeah, our modern time. You think about it, though. One five hundredths of a second? Where are the others? How come they're late? No, they've lost track of the time. Now is a good time to tell you a really fascinating story. All about the invention of time, in fact. Oh, we know all about it. Yeah, don't waste our time. <laughs> oh, oh, time invented, Maestro. I thought the time always existed. Oh, yes, it's always existed. There's never been a time without time. But we had to learn how to measure it, cut it up, and count the pieces. We divided it into... No, no, look here into the, into the distant past, thousands of years ago. I feel hungry. Is that time to eat? You're right. I'm hungry, too. It's time to eat. Well, already? Yes, already it's time. You're leaving? We're going hunting. We have to know it's time. Good, but don't be too late coming home. When the shadow is right here, otherwise I'll be worried. What are we doing here? Are we dreaming? We're in the midst of prehistory. In a way, it was like being out of time. When we dream, that's when time plays its tricks. Did you know that for a long time, time wasn't measured? You take ancient Egypt. It's too early. What is it with you? Can't even tell time. Look, the sun hasn't risen. <laughs> Now's the right time. The sun god is being reborn. The Egyptians, or maybe it was the Babylonians, thought up the idea of the week. The Babylonians? They lived in the place that we call today Iraq. They built a very tall tower, the Tower of Babel, to observe the sky. We see the full moon appear every 30 days. We might divide it into four weeks of seven days. Four times seven, that makes 28. There are two days missing, perhaps eight days in every week. That's two days too many in every week. Won't do. Then a seven and a half day week. No, it wouldn't do. Some weeks would begin during the day and others at night. Let's say seven days. No, I say eight days. I said mine first. Well, that doesn't count. The dice! We'll roll and see who we've done. What? Uh, the Great Black Crow. Oh. I win. A week will be seven days. Well, a crow always means bad luck. <laughs> you know, children, somehow I don't believe that story is true to you. <laughs> the truth is nobody knows why or how the seven-day week came about. Certain peoples decided a week had five days, others decided six days, and sometimes even ten days. That's right, man has sought to, uh, well, uh, cut up time. The big problem is the night. Ixos, the work's too slow. It's over two years and my pyramid still isn't ready. At this rate, I will be dead before the pyramid is even built. The slaves work from sunup to sunset each day, oh, Pharaoh. I don't have enough men. There are no more workers. You make them work after sunset. I can count only the hours of sunlight. The workers have their roles. They will want overtime. We could go over a budget. 
Of course we can. We can count the hours at night. Behold, O Pharaoh. See how the water flows out at a constant rate. I have marked the level of water each hour during the day and they're the same at night. So, we can measure time even when there is no sun. There you are. You work till the third level, the third hour of the night. And you will all receive extra wheat and garlic. Hmm. All right, we'll try it. Just another three hours and we get what's promised. Over time, over time, over time. It's time! Heave ho! Heave ho! Trying to cheat now, are we? <laughs> no, 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 the idea of the water clock spread throughout the Mediterranean. In Greece, public clocks kept time day and night, counting off the hours. And as usual, the politicians are cheating. The anger of the gods will soon strike down upon us. And what's more, citizens of Athens, your taxes That's will win back Demetrius. He never stops talking. And every time he talks, it's the same. We needed a way to limit him. And so we use a small clepsydra. There it is. Oh, I say to you, who are these politicians, fellow citizens? The gods will take vengeance, believe me, and their wrath will It's be always the same. <laughs> Lucky yes, the water's sir. almost I all run out. <laughs> soon your taxes will exceed your income. The politicians will want more. More water? I need more water to speak. I have more to say. <laughs> 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 water, give me water. <laughs> More accurate clepsydras are being invented all the time. There's the one that I mentioned, and another one by Hero of Alexandria. In Rome, at the same time, there were even pocket clocks. They're not terribly accurate, it's true. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You're late. I've been waiting here for half a division. You're wrong. I'm even a little early. Look at my pocket clock. I tell you, you're late. Sorry, old friend, I'm not. I told you I'm even early. Then your pocket clock's no good. The sun is at the zenith, citizens, it is midday. All set your clocks. But the hours of darkness were still a problem. They were erratic. Why was that? Well, because the night had 12 hours, same as the day. However, in winter, the nights are longer. And so those hours were longer in winter and shorter in summer. The shorter the hours, the better I like it, because it's less work. Then we'll all give you an hourglass with sand. Of course, it could measure only short periods of time. But as always, there were exceptions. For instance, the one Charlemagne had. It was turned over once every 12 hours. But there wasn't a moment to lose. <laughs> One day, the Byzantine Empire decided to honor the emperor and present him with a magnificent gift. <laughs> then came the oil clock. It was, alas, not terribly accurate. As for the, the candle clock, well, they say it was invented by a Saxon king, Alfred the Great. O oh Lord, restore my kingdom, and I swear I will consecrate a third of my time to prayer. Don't forget thy sacred oath, Majesty. Candles will be lit one after another in sequence. No, sire, each candle burns four hours. Therefore, you must pray for as long as two candles burn one after the other. Can I have a water clock instead? Your Majesty, Your Majesty. 
the Chinese, who were never a people to do things in the simplest way, came up with an improvement, an enormous water clock. You see, when a container is full, it will drive the wheel, putting in motion the wheel which is linked to the drum. It is here that one reads the time. Here are the phases of the moon as well as the movement of the planet. Naturally, you must Ooh. keep it secret. I saw it! I saw it! The crook that Su Song created for the Emperor, your enemy! It tells when the sun will rise, movements of the planet, phases of the moon, and it tells time! You make an excellent copy, otherwise... You want to see it? Look, the water from here falls down into the basin. Once it's full, the basin drives the wheel you see here, which is linked to the drum which you see here. The drum you see drives the, what, what you I call it. What I want to see is this thing working. Let it in the water. You saw it works. You saw for yourself how well it works. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you like to know just how that story ends? Yes. Just a few years later, unfortunately, the Song Dynasty was overthrown and replaced, and the remarkable clock was dismantled and piece by piece taken to Peking. There you are, oh Celestial Emperor. Your clock is assembled in working order as you desire. <laughs> Oh, most honored son of heaven, this clock is bound to bring evil. Recall, Celestial One, it comes from the last dynasty. We should destroy it. What is your opinion, Sao Michu? This clock is truly admirable. Not one like it in the whole world. I'd consider it, oh, son of heaven, a tragic loss beyond repair for humanity if it were destroyed. This object is harmful, and besides, it houses evil spirits. Now I can show you proof. Oh, 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 and so it was that Su Song's clock, one of the most magnificent creations of all time, was destroyed. And so you see, children, man's stupidity extends to all lands. But now, let's go back in time. It's in France that the very first mechanical clock was to be invented, the ancestor of all of today's clocks and watches. And it was in a Benedictine abbey. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we're late for morning prayers, my brothers. What's the matter? <gasps> I don't know, Brother Gilbert. Frozen again, and so the water clock stopped. Oh, Lord, once again deprived of our wine. You've been in the world, my brother. Find us some solution. As it happens, I'm working on a clock now. You see, gravity pulls down this heavy weight, pulling on the rope, which makes the cylinder turn. The cog wheel is then also turned. At the moment designated, the mallet will strike this little bell right here. You really think it'll work, my brother? Hmm, if God so wills. Uh, what, what, what's that? What, what? Oh, of course, Brother Gilbert's clock. Thank you, Lord. It's working. Bravo, my brother. It is the Lord's will, my brother. If clocks began by waking bell ringers, they soon began to ring bells themselves, morning, noon, and night. One of the most famous bell tower clocks is in the cathedral at Strasbourg in France. are marked out on the face in a circle, going around from noon to midnight and midnight to noon. It's quite simple, yes, but it took a very long time to perfect it. This hour dial, children, we owe it, as it happens, to the Italians. Some of their clockmakers created extraordinary pieces in Padua in the 14th century. Here, look. 
I just invented a dial that you can see at a distance. And it's easy to read the hours. A dial that's round? What absolute nonsense, absolutely useless. But the Earth is also round, besides the sun that determines the hours of the day. It too traces a path that's circular. But clocks don't run in circles. We'll see about that. Excellent, I congratulate you, it is splendid. I can glance at it and tell the time. Mm -hmm. The 12 hours of the day followed by the hours of night. We can divide the hours into minutes. Who is it who invented this superb object? It's me, Jacopo Dondi. My son Giovanni was a great help. Jacopo Dondi, from now on you bear the title of clockmaker. For our university, would you like to make a quite special clock? Special? Oh, yes. I mean a clock that will not only tell the time, it must also mm -hmm. give the phases of the moon, mm -hmm. the movements of the planets, and also... Can you make such a clock? It won't be easy. Well, can you? Um... Me, I can do it. I'm your man. I'll make a clock to do everything you said. You'll see. I will do it, Professor. Only it will take some time. A great deal of time. Me too. I'll do it. Good luck to you. finished one last effort and we'll have done it ah. you know father above all we must consider one thing mm -hmm. one fact stands out and it's the most 17 important. years of work what a shame your father's not here to see it my dear Giovanni, if your clock can really do everything I asked, then, my lad, you have my word. Mm. your name will go down in history forever mm, I can only say I did the best I could what a machine ah. Me too, me too. I made you a nice clock. It's marvelous. And it will tell you more than you could want to know. You'll see. You will Whoa. see. Very well. Let's make a comparison. There are six sides. Here you can read the hours as well as the minutes. On mine as well. Here's hours and minutes here. Here you can read the month and the day all year long. On mine, too. Here, you see? Here are shown phases of the moon, the times of sunrise and sunset, and the position of the sun in the sky. No, me too, me too, me too, me too! I can predict the eclipses, both lunar and solar. As you can see, every feature is clearly displayed on the several faces. And finally, the movement annually of the planets in the solar system. The whole machine operates on this weight. All you have to do is lift it up once every day. Now, yeah, mine too. Curious, isn't it? Your clock is nearly an exact copy of mine. I must say, that's a coincidence. Yes, curious indeed. Extraordinary that here, two men working on their own over a period of 17 years managed to produce identical masterpieces. Well, it proves what a great clockmaker I am. The only thing is, with my Astrarium, there's a small clicking noise when the cogwheels turn. Whereas your machine, Guido, is absolutely silent when it runs. Quite so. My machine here makes no noise at all. None. Ah, God bless you. It wasn't me who sneezed. It's me. <laughs> it's me. I catch colds all the time. Yes, all the time. Ah, Achoo! Ah, well, well, your mechanisms caught your cold. No, no! You have the right! No, it's my secret! My machine, my property, my magical hmm. clock! <laughs> Hello! I'm only here in case it breaks down. The mechanism's fragile. Mary. <laughs> Dial clocks were installed in towns and villages, and important men couldn't do without them. You take Louis XI, King of France. You haven't forgotten my little traveling clock, I hope. No, sire, it's right there. What is the exact time? 
Uh, ten in the morning, sire. Cross the stream! Oh! 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 oh. Hey, oh. Careful! The clock! Oh, no! Oh. oh, my goodness! Our good King Louis' clock! He won't be happy at all! No, it's sure he won't like it at all! Now, what is the time? And the king wants to know the time. Heads will roll. Ooh. It's four in the afternoon. You sure? Take a look. The shadow of this here stick, it just hits my little finger. It couldn't hardly be mistaken. <laughs> it's four in the afternoon, your majesty. I mean, that's right. Despite centuries of progress, many people still use the old sundial. The Greek gnomon. <laughs> Over 2,000 years old. You just mark your hand and read the stick shadow. But everything was to change with the pendulum. Oh, yes, the pendulum. I remember Galileo. Hmm. That's right. Galileo discovered that the time for each swing depends on the length of the pendulum. So it became the precision timer for clockmakers. And watches, too, naturally. They really needed accuracy, certainly in the Navy. Navigation was a very imprecise science. <laughs> then along came Galileo's pendulum clock and his telescope. Can you see Jupiter's satellites? Yes, well, Galileo says you just have to watch them. I'm watching, I'm watching. It's easy to say, sir. An error of five minutes means a two-degree error in logic. No real effort was made until a naval tragedy occurred off the English coast on the rocks of the Scilly Islands. The Admiralty would award a prize of 20,000 pounds to anyone who found a way of accurately determining longitude. Robert Hooke had already invented the spring-driven clock. <laughs> And when Huygens announced his spring-driven clock, Hook would claim that his invention was stolen. Clément invents the anchor escapement, and based on their work, emerges the chronometer invented by John Harrison, the so-called number four, accurate enough to win the Admiralty Prize. Well, it wasn't long before the modern clock. And the first wristwatches appeared in 1910. Oh, yes. Well, there was extraordinary progress leading to the atomic clock, which is accurate to within one second every 3,000 years, and the quartz watch with its tiny battery. You mean like mine? And like, and like mine, 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 like mine. So man, in a way, has mastered time. He's divided it into minutes, and then into seconds, and then into hundreds of seconds, and time sets the pace of our civilization. Uh, but have we really dominated time, or have we truly become its slave? Mm -hmm.